Let me talk on a different vision for healthcare. I'll start by saying, in this audience, I probably know the least about healthcare of anybody. My advantage is I can think more freely and differently. Uh, because I don't know much about healthcare, I call these technologies speculations and musings. But I do believe 10 or 15 years from now, not in 50 years, you'll see a radically different healthcare system. We'll see a much more accessible healthcare system that is much cheaper and more accessible. Um, some of this may be hard to believe, but I would start by asking you, did you imagine a world without Google? That didn't exist 15 years from now, or 15 years ago. Larry and Sergey were just two graduate students at Stanford University. 10 years ago or 15 years ago, the mobile phone essentially didn't exist in India. These things, when they work, and they never work on the first try, change dramatically. So to at least lend a bit of credibility to how large a change can happen, I suggest you look at what change has already happened and what was hard to imagine 15 years ago. But let me start in a different place. Let me start with how bad the state of medicine is today in the best hospitals and locations, in the best physicians. Very high incidence of delayed, missed, and incorrect diagnosis. And for those of you interested, there's always a reference. Uh, this presentation I'll make available. It's also on our website at coastalventures.com. So feel free to read the references that back up what I say. There are as many deaths from misdiagnosis in the United States as from breast cancer. Think about it. It's as big, maybe a bigger disease and a more easily preventable disease. I'm not talking about the 10 or 20% of doctors who are really, really good. I worry about the 50% of doctors who have not kept up with the recent literature who haven't read the last 5,000 articles on cardiology. People who don't care as much or are too busy. They have way too many things to do, too many patients to take care of, and are trying to make a living just getting by. The doctors in rural India that might not be up to speed with what's going on in, in the best hospitals. Human doctors, we love the human aspect. But human doctors have problems, cognitive limitations, cognitive biases. The fun example I would give you is statistics prove that a famous movie actor, say Michael J. Fox, gets Parkinson's disease. In the next year, the incidence of Parkinson's diagnosis goes up dramatically. Why is this? because suddenly every doctor's brain is primed because he's read about it um, to diagnose Parkinson's. So the next patient who walks in with approximate symptoms like that gets diagnosed with Parkinson's. Uh, the incidence of ADHD in the United States is directly related to the number of press mentions. This is a sad state of affairs. So where do these diagnostic errors come from? Obviously, they're system-related errors. That's mostly human failing. But they're also cognitive factors. Now, surprisingly, one of the largest sources of cognitive errors is the patient walks into a doctor. Within the first 30 or 60 seconds, the doctors decided what the patient has. They failed to ask the three more questions that would say a different diagnosis is called for. These kinds of diagnoses, and I don't have enough time to go through all of them, are commonplace. This is an important procedure that was banned in the United States. There were 58 experts. There was a particular outcome. I, for various reasons, I've been asked not to disclose the procedure by the person who authored this study. But 58 experts estimated the probability 
of a bad outcome, a specific outcome. This was the range of ex estimates of the probability of a bad outcome. This is an important prestigious panel on an important procedure.